Bruce Lee was a lean, mean martial arts machine, but the army wouldn't let him serve in Vietnam. Bruce Lee is considered to be one of the most influential martial artists that the world has ever seen. He's renowned for his extraordinary combat skills and physical prowess. Yet despite Lee's incredible attributes and strength, a truly bizarre reason prevented him from serving in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. Lee rose to worldwide fame in the 1960s when he began appearing on U.S. TV and then later in a number of hugely successful films. Before that, he'd become highly regarded in combat circles for his kung fu mastery and the pioneering of his unique own style of martial arts. And the remarkable legacy he left in that field has lived on long after his untimely death. The martial arts supremo enjoyed success in Hollywood too. Movies such as The Way of the Dragon and Fist of Fury are recognized as classics of their genre. Furthermore, Lee's astonishing fitness levels and physical feats soon became legendary. These included having a striking speed of 500th of a second and the ability to do push-ups with two fingers. Nevertheless, Lee's almost unrivaled ability and strength in martial arts was not enough for conscription into the U.S. Army. So why would the American military not want the service of such a legendary martial artist? We'll get to the astonishing details of that a little bit later. Firstly, though, we should take a detailed look at the remarkable life and career of the iconic star. Li Jun Fan entered the world in November 1940 at the Jackson Street Hospital in San Francisco, and a nurse at the institution is believed to have first bestowed him with the name Bruce. However, Li apparently didn't use that name until he began studying English in high school. Li actually arrived in both the hour and year of the dragon. This, in Chinese zodiac terms, is believed to be a powerful and fortunate sign for a newborn. And the mythical serpent-like creature would become synonymous with Lee in later years. Nonetheless, Lee was a rather sickly baby and he was given a girl's name by his superstitious mom, reportedly to help defend him against evil spirits that were out to pinch cherished baby boys. Lee happened to be born in San Francisco because his Hong Kong opera singer father was on tour there at the time. His dad's name was Li Hoi Chen, and he had moved to the U.S. with his wife Grace Ho and Li's three siblings in 1939. The martial artist was the couple's fourth child, and the family would go on to welcome another sibling, Robert, eight years later. But Li didn't stay long in the country of his birth, and his parents took him back to Hong Kong when he was only three months old. And the future star later recalled that one of his earliest memories was the Japanese occupation of the island which lasted for four years from 1941. Interestingly, Lee had enjoyed a taste of stardom at a very tender age. He actually made his first film appearance as a baby just before leaving the United States. Yes, with his father's connections, Lee made it into the Hong Kong flick Golden Gate Girl and played a female. Lee's father had introduced his son to acting at an early age, and it was the latter who helped coach him in the field as a child. Incredibly, Lee had already appeared in 20 films by the time he was 18 years old. But it wasn't just films and schoolwork that were keeping the young star busy. No, Lee was also a multi-talented performer and an acclaimed dancer. He practiced the latter regularly and even emerged victorious in the Hong Kong Cha-Cha Championship dancing competition in 1958. But more importantly, for his future career and fame, Lee acquired another burning passion in his youth alongside dancing and acting. That passion was, of course, martial arts. It began when Lee was 13 and he met a teacher called Master Yip Man, who subsequently taught him the martial arts style of Wing Chun over a five-year period. And Lee's meeting with Yip Man would change the course of his life. The latter was an exponent and instructor of Wing Chun, and Lee would come to master all aspects of the fighting style under Yip Man's tutelage. Lee and Yip Man's warm relationship would continue throughout their lives, and the former regularly visited his teacher in later years. But the star didn't just shine in Wing Chun, he also had a clear talent for boxing. While in high school, Lee would emerge victorious over an English student in an inner school competition using the orthodox rules of the sport which banned kicking. Nonetheless, by the time he'd reached 18, Lee was at something of a crossroads in his life. He hadn't done so well at school, and his penchant for combat had spilled out of the classroom and onto the streets. 
So in April 1959, Lee made a bold decision. With just $100 on him, he clambered upon an American President's Line steamship and began a voyage back to the place of his birth, San Francisco. Lee wouldn't spend much time in Northern California, however. Instead, he made his way to Seattle, where a family friend called Ruby Chow ran a restaurant. She offered to put Lee up and give him a job working there. At this point, he had wanted to concentrate on his studies, so he completed his tenure at Edison Technical School and then later enrolled at the University of Washington. According to the university's alumni publication, Lee majored in drama and spent much of his time there writing numerous essays about martial arts. He had also been teaching a style of self-defense which he called Jun Fan Gung Fu in Seattle for several years by this point. And it was through these classes at the Li Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute that he would meet a University of Washington student called Linda Emery in 1963. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day. But how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you. And so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology, history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories. JoJoStories.com